We're going to take a critical look at the initial search page for Baker and Taylor's Title Source 3 database and compare it with Ingram's iPage database. Both Baker and Taylor and Ingram are book distributors. They work with libraries and retail booksellers of all sizes. I happen to work at a small independent bookstore, and as a regular user of both databases, my store consistently favors iPage as our main resource for looking up books and authors. So this critique is really from my point of view as a retail bookseller, and I'll use the term TS3 from here on to refer to Baker and Taylor's Title Source 3. So let's get a first impression. As you see, it is the Retail Booksellers Edition. TS3 has a pretty much a classic layout here with its main content framed by horizontal menus at the top and a vertical search box on the left. So at the top, there are seven different horizontal menu bars. Already, I'm feeling a bit visually confused. There are just too many color bars and menus for me to have to parse through quickly, some of which don't even have a function. So imagine in a bookstore on any given day, there are customers who are waiting to order a book, they're wanting to find out an author's backlist, or they're ready to start sipping on the vanilla latte they've just ordered. And since we're a for-profit business, every book we sell counts toward our bottom line, and so time is really of the essence. And while these menu items are important and useful, I would make a few simple design tweaks. For example, make the active, the tan active cart bar hideable. Not everyone uses TS3's book ordering system. I'd also move this blue print button to the top right on the green menu and make the search button more prominent by moving it to the center. This would decrease the number of bars and offer a cleaner look and make the search function very obvious. I would also make the Baker and Taylor logo link back to the search page. So my first impression of the title and menu bar for TS3 is that it's cluttered and there's no clear visual hierarchy. Now there's a wealth of information in TS3 that really helps small bookstores like mine make smart buying decisions. Book buyers are able to read reviews, they can create lists, look at print runs, and even advertising dollars that publishers have spent on a book. Typically, though, in independent bookstores, there are really a small number of buyers in relation to booksellers on staff. We tend to use the databases to research a single title or author for the customer who is standing before us. So with that in mind, let's take a more critical look at the search box. As you see, there is yet another set of multicolored boxes and drop-down menus to sort through visually. And while, yes, it does offer all these great drop-down menus, search filter buttons, a Boolean search menu, and honestly, this is just the basic search. And the search filter function is useful. However, at this beginning stage, they're just not relevant and, and they become visual clutter. There are multiple buttons and checkboxes that seem to do the same thing. So compare this with iPage. We have a simple three color scheme with white as the dominant color. There is slightly larger, more readable typography, which is really particularly helpful when one is standing up at a service counter far away from the screen and simultaneously talking with a customer. So there is a lot of looking back and forth from screen to client. And so in a live retail setting, simplicity is absolutely valued more than how many search filters I can apply. And I'll show you in a moment how iPage actually offers us both. But first, back to TS3. If I search for Shrek, and let's say I accidentally used an author search, and in reality, the screen would flicker once during the search. And it appears as though nothing has changed. I actually need to move my eyes above their natural settling point to find, among the many horizontal menus, a small burgundy box that says alert with a zero results found message. So compare this with iPage. And let's say I've entered Shrek accidentally as the author again. And although my results message here is small, the entire look and feel of the screen conveys to me that there are no results for my query. I don't even have to think. 
and with a failed query, iPage is nice enough to offer tips on how to search next time and even a link to go to their used book site. When I change my iPage search for Shrek to title, the results are nicely displayed with subtly alternating colors and even a search within your results option on the left. And what this post query filtering allows me to do is give me a quick visual scan of all of my results and then I can choose to use filters by simply clicking. Um, here I'll choose the juvenile filter at the bottom of the search within your results column. And as you see, iPage automatically updates the results as I refine them. I can even see my breadcrumb trail at the top here. Now TS3 offers search filters as well, however, this sequential number system is pretty meaningless to me. The quick cart and active cart bars again are still very useless. Um, the opening and closing of menus here and clicking so many checkboxes is cumbersome and laborious. In order to get the same juvenile results I used in iPage, I have to click on Audience and each of these children's filters individually to get the same results. So imagine waiting for your glass of Chardonnay that you've ordered while I'm still filtering my search. And in the final analysis, the designers at iPage really understand the user environment. They offer the same powerful search and informative links as TS3 does. However, iPage offers me something expressly more valuable, more time to spend with my customers. And with just a few small changes in presentation and page design, and couple it with its already powerful search capabilities, Baker and Taylor's Title Source 3 could easily become my store's favorite.